well, as usual, what I, to start off, if you will join me in stand, we'll pay and say the pledge to the flag if you don't mind. I'll, I'll ask someone, Bill, would you like to lead us in a prayer? I will. Thank you. Father, we thank you for this day and everyone that's come out to this meeting. We thank you for everything that you've done for us. Lord, we thank you for Mike and what he's done for everybody. We know he works hard. Bless him, Lord, as he continues to do the job, the right job. He's a good man and he's helped us a lot, Lord. Bless us, bless us all. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Officer, would you like to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated, those who wish to sit down. Thank you. Have we got enough room for everybody to sit? Y'all bunch up here a little bit, okay? Stand in room. If I have to, I'll stand. Thank you all for showing up this afternoon, and this is the last and grand finale to my two years in the office as far as being the House Rep for Swain Jackson Haywood. And this is the last town hall for the three counties uh, before the election. I would have sort of thought that we probably would have had a large crowd with this being that and this being uh, one stop and early voting going on. Uh, since I am such a target, according to the media outlet, that shows all the negative and nasty and bad things that I quote supposedly have done in my finger in the house for the last two years. Let me be very clear and let's clear the air to start with. For those of you watching, if you've seen the commercial that talks about how I closed a hospital in 2016 and how I cut back and took all this insurance money, uh, I was not in office in 2016. In fact, I didn't get elected until November 2016. So the news articles from the Smoky Mountain News that are referenced back in the early part of 2016, that's when my competitor was in office. As far as taking thousands of dollars from the insurance industry, uh, checking reports, uh, my reports do not reflect that. Uh, money went to the state party, and it will be on my report. I did get $500 from North Carolina to cross Blue Shield Pack in this third quarter. So if it's thousands of dollars, it's not reflected on my reports. I should clear the air with that. Has anybody got a question? We've got six amendments, and I'm hearing a lot of uh, disinformation and misinformation going about those. And we can take each one individually, or I'll just speak together. I voted for all six of them. I encourage people to vote for all six of them. Two of them, uh, the one for victims' rights, which is Marcy's Law, uh, I supported in the House. Uh, it was a co-sponsor to that particular bill. Also, I was co-sponsor to the voter ID bill. Well, I think voter ID, since we are in the society we are today, uh, and we're looking at a large invasion now coming from a, another foreign country, we need to make sure the legal citizens of North Carolina and the United States have the right to vote and vote one time and one time only. Uh, as far as the other amendments go, there's we all supported those, where I supported all those in the House on my vote to put them on the ballot. My theory and belief in that is because we're a republic democracy. I think it's better to allow the public to make a decision on what amendments they want to take and see and have them put in the Constitution of North Carolina. Some folks say that North Carolina, we don't need to change anything about the Constitution. Well, let's take a look at the Federal Constitution just a minute. There was an amendment in the Federal Constitution called allowing women the right to vote, women's suffrage. Now, I know none of us were allowed back when that happened. But the point being is that changed the Constitution and allowed women the right to vote. Uh, what if that had never happened? So the same goes with these six amendments. What if it never happened with them to allow voter ID, et cetera? So it can be a good thing. A lot of people are naysayers and saying it's not. Um, you know, we're seven days away from the election. I'm looking forward to the eighth day, which will be Wednesday, uh, the day after. Uh, Currently, what I'm hearing on numbers for local, state, and national on election turnout is at 30%, which is actually double what it is normally. Usually it's 12 to 15%, and at 30%, uh, that is an overwhelming number to tell me that people are actually getting out to vote in this midterm election. 
uh, as they say, there's a very important neutral election. And I encourage you, if you're not voting, get out and vote. And uh, it's not too late to make your absentee ballot request. Uh, if you need a ride to the poll, we can get you a ride to the polls. So, not a problem. Uh, I've got my seal number, a seal number posted on the, in the paper. And I've got ads running in the Bryson City where the Smoky Mountain Times, the Smoky Mountain News, the Mountaineer, Cashews Chronicle. So that information is out there. If you need a ride, we'll get you a ride. Uh, I've just been fundraising uh, to be able to pay for the newspaper ads, radio ads. And uh, no, I'm not on TV because I don't have a quarter of a million dollars to put ads on TV because that's about what they run by now because it's a prime time. Constituent service is important. In fact, I was working on one today for someone in Jackson County uh, was having to track down who might be a judge to hear a particular uh, situation for someone trying to get something resolved uh, about a lien on a trailer. And uh, you know, constituent services to me is the most important thing I do. Going to Raleigh is nice, but I will tell you, uh, the icing on the cake is being able to handle people's problems in Swain, Jackson County. That is why I'm so emphatic and believe that my cell phone number needs to be and is on the state website. I give it out. I was on the radio program the other day and I give it out 828-736-6222. And I tell people feel free to call me for whatever the problem might be. Now I can't take care of rodents and uh, vermin and bees nests, but I probably can put you in touch with somebody who can take care of that. So but uh, yes, decisional services are very important. Currently I'm about 95% and I've had probably a hundred or better requests for service and at 95% I've been able to resolve those issues I'll let you anywhere from an inmate transfer from one facility to another one. Uh, it was beyond my control. There was some uh, infractions involved and the person didn't move. But still, one thing is I, uh, I'm attending to those requests. Also, from uh, a good example is our Highway 74, where it's falling off again, uh, had a request and I already knew about it, but uh, contacted my lens on the DOT. And as of today, they're digging it up and uh, putting some more paper on it, which is a good thing. So, That's Chernobyl. You know, Chernobyl. We call it Chernobyl. There's a nickname for it, Chernobyl. It's falling it's off. Like uh, yeah. Also, uh, there's a school, a local school, that I uh, <laughs> noticed did not have any uh, speed limit signs or school crossing signs, et cetera, and I made contact about getting those installed. Those are kind of things that I do that uh, are very important for folks, and uh, safety is uh, paramount. Public safety is paramount, and public safety officers and our first responders are uh, all with that. So my legislation is indeed with that. My re-election is something I hope that will occur and happen, uh, Lord willing. Uh, I have five bills currently that I am looking at renewing when I go into session next year. The first one is called Kimberly's Law. And if you don't know what Kimberly's Law is, a young lady was killed in Lincoln County that 8.30 in the morning by a impaired driver that had no driver's license and his conviction was 75 days. To me that was a travesty of justice for that and he's back on the road now. Um, I have met and I'm a part of the DWI task force in Western North Carolina, uh, Ellen Pitts group that volunteers and follow these cases closely with things like that. We also have another case similar to that of the firefighter killed down in Burke County for the tornado two years ago. They cleared debris off Highway 70, and the person driving was impaired, had drug paraphernalia in the vehicle, and did not have a driver's license. It should not have been on the road. Uh, we well, ran over the field of the firefighter instantly. And so, uh, a very young man, I've met the family, his young children, and he was a young father. It's uh, a real tragedy. We have a real issue with the drugs, opiates, and folks just need to take responsibility for themselves. People have asked me about marijuana. I'll tie that together. Marijuana is, I am all about having a problem with cannabis or medical marijuana. It does not have the industry. But I will not support any legislation for legalization of recreational marijuana. It will not happen. We got enough problems with other drugs. We got enough problems with prescription drugs. So we got to get a handle on that. Uh, some of the other uh, laws that I'm looking at was Derek's law. And it's about uh, a case where. <coughs> 
there was a limitation on the medical examiner's report that said it was an accident, so they ruled it was an accident, it was going to happen anyhow, and the young man was killed. So that law was requested, the bill was filed, and changed the law, put another box on the medical examiner's form, death by motor vehicle, and that would make it when somebody goes to court, uh, identified it, what just an accident. Uh, and there's a couple other items. Uh, I saw the police officers, firefighters, and EMTs, and government officials is currently a misdemeanor in North Carolina. Uh, there's five different uh, statutes and laws with that. I would like to repeal three of those, combine the other two, and make it a felony. Uh, there is too much discretion by the magistrates currently to take, and this has happened in Buckingham County really bad. Uh, but, uh, there's a saw on the EMTs and firefighters, and they're not the folks who's doing so, I get prosecuted. None of them get charged. So that's on my radar. So, but uh, I'm hoping the election does uh, return me back to Raleigh for the next uh, two years, and that will give me my four years to make decisions after that. So, any question? Bill, you got a question? No, I have a comment. Comment? Sure, far away. My understanding, John. Really happy. I'll try. Best job anybody's ever done here. Sorry, Mr. We've tried to do. We tried to do the thing on Road to Nowhere. I introduced that bill. I got told by the governor and the attorney general to drop that because there was nothing I could do or they would do to help me. And I felt that was a very much of a tragedy, a travesty, because the government, the state government, was one of the signatories on that agreement. And had it, we, as the state government, had an obligation to secure that money for Swain County. And so that was one of my priorities when I went in last year. And thank goodness, uh, thanks to President Trump, Zinke, Meadows, Burr, and Tillis. It became a reality recently. We got the rest of the money, so that's a, that's good for Swain. We're proud of you, Mike. Well, I'm, yes, I'm, I'm humbled. You were the first one to call me to the hospital when my wife passed away. Okay. I always remember that in mind. Family and friends are very right. important. Okay. And that's uh, because we've only got one family and we've got one set of friends, and we need to call them right. call them. Mary, you got anything you'd like to ask me today? Actually, it's about the emergency law. Um, with law enforcement already being taxed and not enough manpower, how does that going to affect that? Well, that's a good question. And it's not just for the law enforcement on that. It affects the DA's office uh, and the magistrates, et cetera, to be able to take and inform the family if there's, and it's not so much law enforcement in of it as it is the DAs and magistrates to let the family know that if they're bargaining prosecution-wise that between the prosecution and defense that they're going to go for a lesser charge is to keep the family in the loop or the victim in the loop of what's happening. In other words, if they are using the DWI an impaired uh, example a while ago, if they were going to take and go from a manslaughter just to a, a, a lesser charge of that for someone's death by vehicle, the family has a right to know that. And currently, it's not not happening as it should be. A lot of folks say there's no need for that kind of law. Well, I can tell you, Kelsey Grammer uh, <coughs> is endorsed in supporting Marcy's law. Uh, also, Richard Petty uh, is endorsed and is sponsoring Marcy's law. I co-sponsored it on the House floor because I read it. I thought it was a good thing that we did. Realizing that we have sometimes the perpetrators have more rights than a back on the street before the victim gets out of the hospital and the officer gets through the paperwork. So, yes. Well, Fred, but what, are there any details about what put in place to to financially uh, reimburse or? Well, that would be an appropriation and I'm, I'm on the appropriations committee and securing funding for the different projects that I have, like uh, Western Carolina's 16 billion for the steam plant, uh, fire department, truck for a couple of weeks, 100,000, et cetera, but it's for Swain County on different projects. That would be my obligation to take and secure funding to be able to take and adjunct the law enforcement community to be able to have that pay for so, uh, Just like we did with the school, we put $35 million in the school safety this time this year. We put $1 billion in the school uh, system for uh, education, and yet they say we're, you know, we, as Republicans and I, especially some of the media, commercials I've seen said I, I don't like education. 
Well, I, I supported the $500 tuition per semester at Western Carolina, Pembroke, and Wilmington. And I was at Western Carolina today, uh, Democracy Day, and I asked some of the students, are you in state or in state tuition? And the answer would be yes. Well, let me ask you one question. How do you like your $500 semester tuition? I was loving it. It's great. I said, well, you can thank me because I, I supported that and I support education. And that was North Carolina Promise for Education. People don't believe it, go to ncpromise.com. I think it's great for God or getting out. Point being is there. So, Mary, do you got anything for me tonight? No? You're tired. Mary just got back from here. <laughs> You're doing a great job. You're doing Thank a great you. job. I'm trying to make my head swell. No, I'm humbled and I. Uh, just I'm being honest. I know. Well, I appreciate people's support, Swain. You know, Everybody's busy, I know, but I have made the obligation, made the promise, the obligation to do town halls for my entire tenure in Raleigh, my two years. And I have done town halls in all three counties in some months, two a month, to get caught up because we were in session. And the only months I didn't have a town hall is because it was in session, there was no more time available. But uh, I think the legislators, whether it's senators or representatives like me, need to take and spend this time out in the community, whether people come or not, make the time available and be out here if people want to come. And I have attempted and tried to do that and to the best of my ability. And also answer questions. And questions have been tough and hard sometimes. And that's okay. I need people on the spot for that. That's all I got. Sir, back in the end, you got any questions for me tonight? No, I'd like to <coughs> make a comment that uh, I've been very thankful uh, for the times that you've showed up, especially for the uh, different campaigns we've had against drunk drivers, the uh, check-in stations that we've showed up. But I personally am thankful for, for the things that you do, such as a prayer before meeting. Uh, I know you've been under attack by people for, for having prayer before you start meetings. And I just want to thank you for your stance on that and, uh, and putting God first. I appreciate that. I appreciate your nice comments and, and humbled by it. Uh, I think we were a God, God founded country, <coughs> excuse me, and we're a Christian nation, regardless of what some people say. And I think we need to recognize that and be appreciated because we have been very, <coughs> excuse me, blessed. Drink your water in. First time I've ever had anybody, any representative, do that to where I know what you're doing every week and, and that what was, you're proposing and what you're voting for. And it's wonderful. Well, that's uh, I feel like that you know, besides having the town halls, constituent services includes the information uh, and direct lines. Uh, my competitor keeps talking about internet and some of these big, great ideas or whatever, the smart meters. The thing is, sometimes it's the simplest things like a town hall and an email that you know what's going on. Uh, my legislative assistant, Ed Stiles, does those and does a great job. And I couldn't do it without him because I tell him specifically sometimes what I want, and he takes the ball and runs with it. So, yes, well, thank him for me. We got about a thousand, about a thousand uh, email addresses. I encourage people. I can only, I can count. Just a handful that have said they didn't want to hear, and that's actually those that don't want to hear real news. They read the list of Mike, can I ask a question? Yeah, well, sure, yes, absolutely. So, uh, Angel Hospital is closing the labor and delivery section of their hospital in Macon County, which is leaving uh, many families in desperate need of such a facility. Do you have any thoughts about how the state can help address that problem? Um, it's a good question, and 
I was recently at Bayhack uh, for a new facility for simulations being open. I have been over to the the new hospital authority that bought out Mission Hospitals Group, and we've had dialogue, and they have put in a $25, $25 million to a total of $50 million grant. I foresee that groups could uh, take and request uh, through grant funding from that group funds to be able to have an intermediary, whether it's a minor clinic, et cetera. Mm -hmm. uh, talk about women having children and birthing, unless it's a complicated uh, delivery like a cesarean section. Uh, I delivered three when I was in Charlotte, so they've been been happening a long time. And, uh, not to say that medical care shouldn't be available, it should be. Uh, Kevin Corbin is in that district over there, and he and I have had some conversation with that, but uh, with them closing that, it it's very difficult uh, to take and, and say that no, it's not needed, or yes, it's totally needed. Center, but uh, it, it does cause concern, it causes me concern. The HCA, the new program that's uh, with Mission Hospital in Asheville, uh, Swain, Jackson, and Haywood do not participate in that. We are part of what's called Duke Life Point out of Tennessee. My question to them was, as far as these grants that's going to be available, are we going to be able to participate and request those? And the answer was yes. So I'm hoping that kind of grant funding will be available for Lincoln County area and that also. I mean, it's the best I can get right now. So, if not, I'm sure I'll hear some more about it. And like I said, I'll, I'll get reelected. I'll be talking to Kevin Corbin about it because it, it is important. It is important for those uh, people to be served over there. But uh, we, you know, as far as coming up with a good straight, flat out, what's going to happen? It's it's hard to say because the medical industry and healthcare is morphing right now. And when I say morphing, it's, uh, it's changing weekly almost on what's being covered, what's not being covered, and deductibles. And it's going to take some self-regulation for them to get out of it. I don't think the government needs to get in there and start telling them. I don't believe in this, uh, CON, Certificate of Need. I spelled, sponsored the bill to take and allow optometrists to do laser eye surgery. And the reason I did, uh, I've had two torn retinas, one in both eyes, and I had to drive to Asheville with one eye and back home with one eye because I couldn't see. And uh, I wouldn't have had to do that if I had the local ability to go to an optometrist to get that. And there was a lot of screaming of people saying, well, that, you know, that's terrible, we shouldn't do that. Well, we got to think about patient needs too. So, and that's, if it, I'd been any older or uh, incapacitated when I'd had to have a driver, I'd have to spend a night and been additional cost to set So, and it took two days. And it's emergency surgery to have a torn retina reattached and you do it later. Because if you don't have it reattached, it will it will come uh, it becomes detached and then you go blind. Mm -hmm. So I'm very fortunate with that. That's why I was, I was the poster board for that as well. So. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, thank you everyone. Um, about 30 minutes tonight. Usually it's about two hours and a half, and sometimes it's very heated, but uh, I'm very blessed tonight. Freeman Crown, thank you all. I appreciate your support for watching this. God bless North Carolina and the USA.